How are you? My name is Eric Francis. Welcome to Color Harmony. In this video, we're going to be producing a monochromatic painting. So I make a drawing, I outline it, I give it a number wash, and we're ready to begin. Let's go. For this painting, I use five different colors. And for the portrait, I only use three. If you follow along this video, you're going to find out exactly how I did this. So stay tuned. But before we even start to talk about a painting, let's spend a few minutes and talk about the things that happen before we begin to paint. The selecting of an image, which is really important. And then the sketch, which is equally important. Before we begin to paint, we have to pick a subject. Now, some people like to paint from life, but I mostly use pictures. There are plenty of advantages to painting from life. When you paint from life, you get more information than you do when you're looking at a photograph. There are so many tiny little nuances that you get when you're looking at a person from life that you'll never get looking at a photograph. Sometimes photograph distorts things, but photographs are easy to access. You know, you don't have to set up time with a model and you ain't gotta have them sit down still for hours. So I like using photographs for that reason. Its advantages far outweigh its disadvantages. What you're looking at now is the beautiful model, Jasmine Sanders. I just happened to see her face on one of these uh, photo sharing sites, so I Googled her. Because of this fancy internet thing, <laughs> there are plenty of places you can get really nice images from. And I'm gonna give you a list of some of the sites I like the most. I really like Morg Files. It's a place where they just have tons and tons and tons of pictures. You should check it out. Another good one is Wet Canvas. It's an artist community. They do all kind of neat stuff there. But also there's Flickr. On Flickr, you can find artist communities as well as just people who love to take pictures. Be sure to get their permission though before you use their stuff. It'll really be worth it if you take the time to start your own picture library. Family and friends make lovely models. Keep your camera phone handy because you never know when you're gonna run into a subject. Believe me when I tell you, your whole world changes when anything in your world can be a possible subject for a painting. Even if you have to take a picture on your phone and your phone doesn't give really good images, you can make a note in your mind and return back to the place or return back to the person and get better pictures of them. It makes a regular boring mundane day into an adventure. When you put it in your mind that you're gonna find at least one thing every day that fascinates you. This is how you keep your mind on art in a really positive way without actually having to draw or paint everything. Because a lot of times, you know, you really don't have time. But you should have enough time to take a, one picture a day, you know, or for something that fascinated you. And you'll find yourself talking to people all the time and asking them to be models for your paintings. Some people get weirded out. Some people get really flattered. It's a good idea to have your paintings online. So when you tell people you're an artist, you can actually have something to show them. And I find for the most part that most people are really flattered. The picture in my mind never completely matches the painting that I make. Now, does that keep me from painting? Of course not. Does that keep me from loving my work and wanting to share it with people? Absolutely not. And you shouldn't let it be a roadblock to you either. When you study the work of 
great artists, you'll notice that they always get better. And it's going to be the same with you. When you know where you're going, it's okay to be where you are because you know you won't be there tomorrow. So smile. You might not necessarily know where you're going, but when you're done, you definitely have some ideas in your head. You either know that, yes, this is working out right, or no, this is way off. If you want to know the direction that you're headed in, just take a minute, close your eyes, and try to imagine a perfect painting. Now, that's the direction that you're headed in. That's what you're working towards. You're working towards that perfect painting. You can get pretty close, but you're going to have to put in some work. And I'd love to help you along in your journey. I'm putting together a course. Six different lessons over the course of six weeks. What you're going to get is everything that you've seen in all my videos and more. We're going to use Google Plus or maybe Skype and video chat about once a week. In these six lessons, we'll create two minor paintings and one major project. And we'll also go over drawing, basic drawing for painting anyway. If this is something that will interest you, email or send me a private message. Let's talk about the next thing I do after I find an image. That is, make a sketch. There are two very good reasons why we should make a sketch before we start the painting. First reason is, you want to get your ideas from out of your head onto a sheet of paper. The second reason is, you really want to get warmed up. You want to switch over to the artist's way of thinking and seeing. It makes painting a whole lot easier. So let's talk about the first reason. You really want to get the idea from out of your head onto your drawing pad. For the most part. I don't add every single detail. I don't draw every single eyelash and every single strand of hair. There are some things that I just leave out. And then there are other things that I add. And I want to see what it's going to look like. Sometimes I want to make the eyes. I want to make them pop more. I want to add more detail. And sometimes I want to add less. By making that drawing, you get to see what it's going to look like. Or maybe you're creating a hyper-realistic portrait and you're going to be adding details. And when you make this, this little sketch, you get to see how you're going to position the thing on the canvas. I really love the old masters and I'm in awe of what they were able to accomplish. And when I look at their work, I think, man, how were they able to do that? But then you go even deeper and you look at the the amount of sketching that they used to do. They left nothing up to chance. They made it as good as they possibly could. And I'm trying to do the same thing. I want my work to be as good as it possibly can. And the second reason is, we have to make a mental shift to the artist's way of thinking. We have to be able to do this consciously. We normally make this shift unconsciously, but it's something we have to learn how to do. Our dominant way of thinking is verbal. It's analytic. It's temporal. It's rational. It's logical. And it's linear. But when you switch over to the artist's way of thinking, it's nonverbal. It's actual instead of symbolic. It's non-temporal. You lose track of time. It's not rational. You deal with spatial relationships. It's intuitive. This should all be sounding a little bit familiar to you. You know? And you have to make that switch. 
because in your normal way of thinking, you're reading signs, you're talking to people, you're putting things together logically. But when you switch over to the artist's way of thinking, it's completely different. You're not working with a symbol system. You're seeing things as they actually are. We're thinking with our eyes and not with our brain. Your brain is going to throw out a lot of symbols and tell you that this is absolutely incorrect. But your eyes are saying this is what it is. And when you make this switch over, drawing and painting, if you have the right tools, becomes as easy as watching TV, as easy as walking and eating or anything else. But you have to be able to make the switch over. This is extremely important. Now, you teach yourself how to make this switch by recognizing when you're in the zone. When you actually make the switch over from verbal to nonverbal. When you're seeing things as lines and shapes and you get this feeling like you're in the flow or you're in the zone by taking the time, which could only be a few minutes, to make a little drawing or a little painting, you make the switch. Your normal way of thinking, your dominant way of thinking, isn't equipped to make realistic drawings and paintings. It's just gonna get in your way. You know exactly what I mean. Your brain is gonna start to complain. <laughs> As it should, it's not its job. It's the job of the artist mind. So take your time and make the switch. I first got introduced to this idea many years ago in college when I read a book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. It's by Betty Edwards, and it's by far the best instructional book I've ever read. Even if you don't feel like doing anything, just start doodling. You'll get right into it. I'm about to share some tips on painting with you. So let's go back to the beginning. So the first step always is to make an umber wash. How I get at this umber wash is I look at the drawing, which is kind of rough, and then I transfer the drawing onto the canvas. Now, the drawing is completely mapped out even though it's a little bit rough, and it just needs a little bit of cleaning up. Then I add three different intensities of umber paint. There's dark, there's a medium, and there's a light. Now, I lighten the paint by adding water to it. So I go from darkest to lightest color. The paint is pretty diluted to begin with. I just simply dilute it more, starting off first with the dark color, then working to the medium, then to the lightest. And after they all dry, I wash over all the colors again. Now, I do this umber wash stage to fill the canvas up with paint. The then I began to pick up on things that didn't get done right. For example, in this painting, the chin wasn't right, so I had to change the chin. The uh, lips were wrong, I had to thin them down a little bit. The lips were too low, I had to move them up high. I had to turn the ears back a little bit. Now these are little slight things, but all together they help bring a stronger likeness to the painting. And if I didn't do the umber wash stage, I wouldn't be able to catch it. And it's really cool to catch these things early on before you really start to build up paint. So we start off with the darkest paint and we work towards the lightest paint. And you wanna keep your reference photo close by because you don't wanna lose the likeness. Even though you're not really doing anything really um, specific, you're just filling in colors, you can easily go off course. I used a very limited palette in this painting because as painters, we have a very interesting problem. It's actually a good problem. Too many paints. So we're mostly using umber and white for the portrait. So for this first stage of the painting, we're gonna layer it for about three to six layers. While you're layering paint this way, it's far too easy to not look at your reference. And because of that, things go slightly off. 
make mistakes that you could really easily avoid just by checking your reference every once in a while. If you can, it'll be a worthwhile thing to get other reference photos of the person that you're painting. Because sometimes in your main reference photo, there might be certain things that are blurry or that you want to change. And you want to have this other reference material around to kind of go back to and look at. Because if you're going straight from your imagination, you might go off in the wrong direction. When you have the reference photo there, you have something solid and tangible to work from. Let's take a look at this painting of Mila Kunis. Someone commented that her eyes were completely wrong. Well, let's take a closer look and see. Because of our symbol system, we have ideas about the way we think things should look. You might think it should look like this, or that, or this, or that. But in my opinion, she's giving the squinty eye look. When is it natural to give the squinty eye look? When we smile, of course. It's not natural to smile without squinting your eyes some. It's like the harder you smile, the more your eyes squint. We have to get past our symbol system that tells us what everything should look like. And when you do, you're gonna wonder if you've ever seen anything. Because you're gonna begin to see things as they are and not as you are. Let's take a look at the hands and see if we can see it in a simpler way. First, the hand can be drawn as some very simple geometric shapes. Second, if you were to open your hand and stretch your fingers out, you would notice they all pointed inwards, all of them except your thumb, of course. And if you were to close your hand and bring your fingers together, they all turn towards each other and meet. As you're drawing in the basic shape, consider all the negative space and the positive forms around the hand. If you look at A, you'll see that if you get that shape right, you get that part of the hand right. All these lines are imaginary lines that represent what I'm seeing. So when you look at B, C, and D, I break it down into even smaller parts. In letter G, I'm measuring the space between A and E. In letter H, I'm measuring how high up the thumb is on the cheek. And finally, in letter I, I'm beginning to refine the shapes. I'm comparing one side of the pinky to the other side. The hand, like every other part of the body, is a series of curves on top of curves. At this stage of the painting, it's completely blended and we're almost done. It takes around six to eight layers to get to this point. Now, the reason why it might take so many layers to get to this point is because I like my paint thin. Now, if you were painting with thicker paint, you could get to that much faster. I add water and medium to all my paint. And also, some paints aren't as thick as other paints. So I have to add extra layers of one particular color in order for it to get full coverage. Plus the quality of paint matters. In general, not always, but in general, the more pricier paint means more pigment in the paint. So that means you have to use less paint because the pigment concentration is higher. In conclusion, I'll say, on this road, we're often confronted with a choice. Do you do what you want to do, or do you do what others want you to do? Or you can say, do you believe what's in your heart, or do you believe what other people are saying to you? It's your choice. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, like, 
subscribe, share, and or leave a comment. If you want to see more art, you can check out my blog. There will be a link in the description. If you enjoy this content and you've been learning a lot and you want to do more to support this content, you can donate. Your donations go to pay for paints, paintbrushes, canvases, and all the knickknacks I need to keep this thing going. There is a button on my blog that will take you to PayPal. And I thank you in advance for whatever you leave. These videos are made in response to questions I get asked all the time. So feel free to ask. Peace.